Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the latest Futures webinar. My name is Ahmed Mahmutovic. I'm education team lead within Beha Futures Foundation. I'm truly honored tonight to host our speaker, Alo Shapashic, who is a senior consultant and the technology transfer director at uh, Atos Research and Innovation. Next to that, Alosha is a very good friend of Foundation and a mentor for our scholars. Theme of webinar is 25 years in cybersecurity, in uh, which Alosha will talk about safeguards, guidelines, best practices, sub-segments, and many other relevant issues uh, will be covered before presenting the current most relevant initiatives and institutions and providing an outlook into the future. At this point, I want to say, Alosha, thank you for joining us today and for supporting the youth of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, Ahmed forgot to mention that I was mentor, his mentor last uh, year, actually two years ago he, in, uh, in Bosnia Future Foundation. And I was uh, really happy and honored to, to have such a good uh, mentee. Uh, so you can see my name, Aliosa, without sh, without ch. Uh, uh, this is because when I moved to Spain, I, I lost a sh and ch, but it's Aliosa Pasic, not Aljosa Pasic. Uh, this is the way they call me here in Spain. I live in Madrid. And uh, 25 years in cybersecurity is a title because obviously I, I have 25 of experience. Actually, it will be next year, 25 ex years of experience in cybersecurity. I have a little bit more. Uh, of experience in IT, because uh, you will see in this first part of presentation, this is index, you will see in the first part of presentation a little bit about me, uh, and then uh, we will follow this schedule. You can stop, uh, I guess, at any point, uh, I'm not sure what is the format, you can uh, ask questions at any point or raise your hands or or, um, or save your questions for the for the end, and then we will have questions and answers session. Okay. So short biography, uh, the story started 1969 in Bugoino. I was born in Bugoino. Uh, I'm hope, I hope that everybody knows where is Bugoino. It's not a world famous city, but it is, uh, it is my hometown. And I also lived, uh, well, my father is from Mostar. So you can see the second uh, coat of the arms of Mostar. The third one is Zagreb. I studied in Zagreb for three years uh, until 91. And then I moved when the war in Croatia started, I moved to Sarajevo. The fourth one uh, is uh, you, you can recognize probably Sarajevo coat of arms. When the war started in 92, in April 92, I moved to Netherlands in refugee camp. I was there uh, for some months before joining Eindhoven University of Technology. So the fifth, uh, the first on the lower uh, left side is Eindhoven. Uh, then uh, I finished 96. Technical University of Eindhoven and graduated in information technology um, and uh, moved to Utrecht, where I, in Utrecht, I, I worked for Capgemini. It's a uh, quite big consulting uh, and system integration company. And this is where I had my first experience after uh, in 96, I started to work. In 98, I had my first uh, contact with, uh, it was not called cybersecurity then, it was uh, uh, information uh, security uh, and IT security. I was, uh, you will see a little bit later, uh, installing a public key infrastructure PKI system in a bank, in a very large Dutch, Dutch bank. The fifth, the, sorry, the uh, six, seven, seventh coat of the arms is Madrid. I moved in 1999 to Spain, to Madrid, because I met uh, as an Erasmus student, a Spanish girl, and uh, being a very romantic guy, I moved because of, uh, of the law uh to spain not only but uh, okay uh, and the last one is san pedro de pinatar this is a small uh, town on the spanish coast where i have a summer house and i spent uh, some time there uh, usually as uh, teleworking and, and uh, you know having some fun also I have a mentee this year whose name is Basil. I hope Basil is there, uh, Basil Bosniak. And he told me, OK, why don't you tell the story of, uh, of a rock star? And what is the story of a rock star? When I was a student uh, in Zagreb, uh, second year of, uh, of my study, electrotechnical, I, I studied uh, military technical university in Zagreb. And, and uh, I was uh, as information technology uh, informatics student. Uh, I 
decided in the middle of second year that I wanted to be a rock star and that being an IT student is nothing for me, that I had a talent uh, the best in the world for uh, writing songs and uh, recording. I had a couple of uh, demo sessions and demo recordings. And this was my plan to be uh, to become rock star. And my father and my parents, they somehow they managed to 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 return me to the normal path. Uh, <laughs> well, normal, the the IT and the student uh, 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 path. And I I resisted to. Uh, uh, I never became a rock star, obviously. And uh, I became presenter. Uh, this is the closest that I got as a rock star, uh, the presenter of, on, on international conferences. And uh, the only thing that I uh, I still have creativity. I do have um, opportunity to speak in the public. Not to I was not singing. I was playing keyboard. But still, uh, my message here is that okay, you can uh, sometimes give up your dreams. But if you if you have uh, if you know what is the behind these dreams and I it was a creativity in my case uh, you can still uh, in in some other profession in my profession which has obviously nothing to do with uh, music but I still find enough creativity working in research and development department and um, I'm, I'm somehow realizing these dreams uh, not by repeating after my presentation oh let's everybody sings after me you know no 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 I will not ask you this but uh, still, I have, as I said, some, some, somehow I feel this realization of this uh, creative and and uh, and um, interactive uh, role in my job. And this is the last slide about me. The best of the. So I said that deployment of public infrastructure in a bank uh, called ABN Ambro. This was in '98. Uh, some other projects, it was a research project, security policy adaptation reinforced through agents. This was in 2000, uh, my first uh, research project uh, in, uh, financed by EU. And then many others, uh, biometrics on, on uh, smartphone, as it was called, a smartphone in uh, 2004. It was, uh, now it looks like, <laughs> it's not even 20 years, but it looks like dinosaurs, these phones that we had in 2004. Blah, 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 blah. I have uh, many conferences. I'm in programming committee of many conferences, papers, and, uh, and I'm a mentor of uh, Bosnian uh, Future Foundation. So this is also a highlight for me. Uh, this is my third year as a mentor. And I think really it is uh, one of the, of the success stories in, in my life. Besides that, uh, I have uh, one daughter, two wives, uh, well, obviously not at the same time. Uh, my first wife was Spanish. My second wife is Argentinian, and three countries. So I have uh, another Dutch passport, Dutch passport, and Spanish. Also, my daughter is, for example, a Spanish passport, etc., etc., etc. Again, this was not as it was planned. My original plan or my idea was to have uh, two daughters, one wife, uh, one country. Uh, but you know, the things uh, don't always uh, turn out to be as you plan them or as you imagine them. So. The point is to adapt as life's, life goes on, to adapt to whatever life brings you. And this is also part of the adaptation to, to environment and the context is part of intelligence. I'm sure that all of you are able to, to adapt very quickly to any circumstances. This is all about me. So about this presentation, this is even shorter. Uh, I prepared a little bit of everything, a lot of uh, spices, a lot of ingredients. I was not sure what is the level of uh, um, in this uh, in the audience. What is the level of maturity? What is the level of, of knowledge about cybersecurity? So I prepared a little bit about uh, basic stuff, a little bit about more advanced stuff, a um, lot of metaphors, mental models that are helping people to understand what is cybersecurity. Uh, I try to be to disseminate a little a little bit about scientific uh, topics uh, and also to be to be divulgative. So you can make your own dish with these ingredients. Uh, I will not uh, be prescriptive. Uh, at, at least I will try to not to be prescriptive. You can, as I said, uh, interrupt me and and uh, save your questions uh, or save your questions for the end. About cyber. Uh, I split on purpose cyber and security, and I mentioned uh, uh, previously that before cybersecurity was hype and before it was called cybersecurity, I worked in information security in IT security. 
In 2014, uh, I was working on a project for the World Bank. Uh, the project uh, was called the Feasibility Study for a Cybersecurity Center of Excellence in South Korea. So I was uh, traveling uh, to Washington, South Korea, uh, and and one of the first things that I did, I already had quite experience in, uh, as I said, information security and IT security. So uh, as a consultant for the World Bank, I, I wanted to establish a, a, a definition, clear definition of cy what cybersecurity is, as opposed to network security, as opposed to information security or IT security, etc. So you you can find uh, here you can see some. Uh, of the of the proposed definitions, there is no one single definition. There is a there is a lot of overlap. Uh, you can see that information security is not only about the digital information. Information security is also about uh, information which is on a paper. So that's why they say in security policy, and companies destroy after you read or burn after you read. Uh, this is also information security, and. Uh, ICT security, information communication security, for example, it is uh, obviously uh, communication has to do with networks and uh, and some people then with the emergence of internet before internet, there were other types of network. Internet is just one type of network. So you could say the cyber is, uh, is becoming popular with the introduction of internet, but I wouldn't call cybersecurity equivalent of internet security because, again, there is a lot of overlap with internet security, but uh, there is also uh, overlap with uh, other fields like critical infrastructure protection, for example. Uh, now that I mentioned critical infrastructure protection, it is uh, it is usually a part of the business of uh, the ministries of interior for example here in spain the the agency that is dealing with critical infrastructures is is part of the guardia civil which is uh, depending on ministry of interior uh, same like cyber crime there are cyber crime units in uh, ministry of interior and more recently is also ministry of defense have their uh, cyber defense uh, uh, segment uh, which is very related to cyber security and some would uh, some would argue that mm, tactics techniques uh, is this are the same. So so basically they are there is a lot of overlap. There are uh, each uh, each consultant from each segment will try to maybe convince you that the, they are very different, but the differences are rather small in cyber defense. Maybe the threat actors are uh, uh, nations or in, it could be the different threat actors. In cybercrime, they are uh, more uh, commercially uh, motivated threat actors. But again, a lot of overlap. Risk management, I will talk later about risk management. Business continuity, uh, it is uh, uh, yet another term. So a lot of, lot of related disciplines and terms and segments. So conclusion, there is no single definition. There is an overlap between all of these. And sometimes even the experts are confused. Don't be scared to say that there, there is an overlap because there is. Uh, some of the characteristics, at least in my view, some of the characteristics of cybersecurity is uh, are that that is multilateral. Uh, there are many actors. Uh, you all navigate on internet. You all have mobile phones, and uh, you know that there are telecommunication providers. There are uh, web uh, hosting. There are uh, owners of web pages. There are the the the, the people who are buying the the private information. The, the many uh, different uh in supply chain many different interests uh that are uh, not always in the same direction so uh multi-speed there are different type of uh you will hear talking about threats vulnerabilities incidents alarms alerts safeguards controls etc etc they they are uh, again not always uh the same they don't have the same meaning they are they have different kinds of probability different kind of dynamicity and evolve at different speed there is a lot of cascade effects, which means that what happens to you, the risk that you have, and what happens, the attack that happened to you, have impact on other stakeholders. Uh, I mentioned critical infrastructures, and uh, you probably know that when there is an attack on, I don't know, uh, energy, uh, critical infrastructure, there is a cascade effect on transport infrastructure, on financial infrastructure, on uh, every other hospitals. Uh, the, there are many different critical infrastructures, and their attack on one of this infrastructure has cascading effect uh, on others. Even when there is effect, there is attack on you. When there is a botnet installed on your machine, there is a cascading effect on somebody else because the, the, the attack can be 
launched from your machine and uh, etc so what is risk for you is also risk for the others there is a strong impact of societal or legal or cultural uh, factors so uh, think about the, the the trust trust is a societal in issue so the, in the beginning of internet more than a little bit more of 25 years years ago the, the, the there was a lot of trust there was a, also a lot of anonymity uh, that this shift in default behavior people are now very skeptical when you receive probably email you don't open it if you don't know who is uh, sending it you when you visit pages you're not really uh, um, I hope you're not pressing that the, the button unless you see that there is a secure link HTTPS in, in, the, in the header. Uh, so this change of societal behavior means that there is, a, there is also something uh, not only technical, but uh, we will see later also about people and about uh, procedures that is uh, linked to cybersecurity. Uh, then about markets, economics. Uh, okay, this is uh, just for cybersecurity, privacy. That, but there are there are different fields of economic theories uh, applying here. The classical and behavioral economy. This is about cyber. What about security in general, and security and cybersecurity? Uh, okay, so this is about cybersecurity, uh, evolution of cybersecurity. Uh, this is uh, 20 years, but as I said, uh, my first project was in 98, which was uh, public key infrastructure. In 98, public key infrastructure was introduced to improve in a bank, which are always, the, the, the banks are always having the, the top security, always the pioneering the, 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 the best cyber security. And public key infrastructure was introduced for a number of purposes, uh, mainly for uh, identification, for access control, and uh, for um, uh, for digital signatures. But uh, we have here evolution, which is from uh, of threats uh, from 2000, and uh, you can see it escalating like a kind of wind. I, I'm not sure what is the type of this wind that is growing and growing, a tornado or hurricane. I don't know. Uh, and it is getting bigger and bigger the impact of the in, in spending also so this is uh, all things that you know very well i wouldn't say that this is something new um, what i will try to uh, explain today a couple of metaphors and mental models to bring you closer to to present uh, for many people, is cybersecurity is a little bit strange, maybe, and and not not clear uh, what what it includes. So I will use metaphors and mental models to to bring uh, closer this discipline to you. Uh, mental model is is a explanation of thought process. So it's 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 a kind of model that is uh, simple and so that everybody can grasp it like this and and and, and uh, is is made by observations, by inductive uh, reasoning, and I'm sure that all of you are students of different disciplines maybe and you have you use every day you use mental models in economy you have supply demand so the, the typical market uh, powers on the market game theory which is uh, also used in, uh, in um, cyber security economics of scale uh, another one the psychology there are a couple of these mental models mathematics uh, uh, i think all the all uh, engineering students use normal or gauss distribution which is a typical uh, mental model uh, pareto principles that, that, that um, 80% of consequences are generated by 20% uh, of the causes. Uh, cybersecurity, we have a couple of these mental models. One is a NIST. NIST is, a, uh, you can see it on top right corner. NIST is American standardization uh, body. So it's a national institute for security technology, I think. Uh, it is uh, having something called cybersecurity framework, and it is uh, identify uh, protect, detect, respond, and recover. So we start with identification of threats, identification of vulnerabilities, identification uh, of users, uh, access controls, authorization, etc., etc. Protect, protection measures which are in place, uh, 
anti uh, antivirus uh, malware protection there are different protective measures detection is usually in a uh, real time we have intrusion detection we have um, uh, security information and, and event management uh, incident response that comes once that uh, that correlation of rules for example in security information event management in cm tool we find uh, incident then is a response and recovery it has to do with business continuity so this is uh, when the backup is restored etc this is one mental model another one is uh, in from mitre again this is american uh, uh, institute mitre has attack uh, which is uh, kind of uh, from adversary perspective kind of a framework or mental model uh, from adversary perspective which is about techniques uh, technologies and procedures used by adversary by the ones that is trying to attack so it's reconnaissance uh, reconciliation weaponizing delivery exploit control execute and maintain so these are different phases in attack uh, finally iso iso is uh, again standardization body iso is international standardization organization 27001 is the most famous security uh, standards for security management systems uh, 27001 and 27002 has 14 domains i will not go into detail but it's also a kind of uh, framework or mental uh, map which is useful for systems for especially for management uh, so so it's not uh, about products it's it's more for uh, security management systems metaphors are even easier to understand i'm sure that everybody understand digital fortress you have one access point and the one on the on the end of this bridge that you see here is asking you, okay, uh, password, uh, what do you want? I don't know, you have to, in order to get into the, 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 the fortress, you have to pass the access control and usually is uh, very well protected with firewalls uh, in, I'm now using <laughs> a combination of digital fortress and, and uh, information technology so so the company in the past 25 years ago used to be protected by firewalls and uh, they were letting only through specific ports or gates they were letting uh, people from outside now it's uh, obsolete it's obsolete we have zero trust uh, paradigm in cybersecurity, which is like a big city like jungle where there is no trust uh, and you must let everybody in because uh, for your business is not any more sustainable to have firewalls everywhere and, and uh, to, to have just few gates to let people in. Otherwise you lose business because uh, you have many partners, you have many people teleworking, uh, you have uh, many other things where you cannot keep the, the wall around your uh, network. So the new paradigm is to to have controls inside of this big city, uh, police patrols or any other controls. Uh, we'll come later to a number of controls. But uh, in principle, you don't trust people who go, come into big city. So you're always asking them, um, for example, for continuous re-identification, etc. Another uh, metaphor here below is uh, the plan, do, check, act against, observe, orient, decide, and act. So the, the left plan, do, check, act is something that used to be done for many years, and it was in ISO 27001. And uh, basically, you plan uh, security. You have uh, some security policy, like uh, this is my security password. You change it every three months. It has to be eight characters, blah, blah, blah. You do it. You implement that. If you don't comply with security policy, uh, you, you check and uh, you act. You say, OK, you, you have to change your password because uh, it is obsolete and uh, you cannot have this one, uh, which is uh, not compliant with our policy. Uh, this is, again, a little bit obsolete, not, uh, not completely, but uh, because of the speed of changes, now it has to do has to do much more with improvisation. Uh, this on the on the right, well, my right side, left. Uh, my left is an orchestra, symphonic orchestra. They are uh, planning and and uh, and uh, playing according to the notes. They are not uh, making any improvisation. On the right side is uh, jazz uh, jazz orchestra, which is uh, doing improvisation and jam session. Um, they as they as they listen to the context the mood of people they are uh, improvising 
So we have uh, not really improvisation in cybersecurity, but we have continuous monitoring. And this continuous monitoring is listening to events on network, is listening to uh, events, is collecting log files, is listening to events on uh, application layer, and it's uh, making reorientation of, uh, of cybersecurity uh, policy or cybersecurity uh, re re reassessing the risk and doing uh, some new decisions. Okay, another metaphor, uh, cars, you everybody is familiar with uh, security on the road infrastructure. So I guess uh, this is also useful uh, metaphor, actually number of metaphors, because here we have uh, in road infrastructure, we have, for example, engineers of the road infrastructure. This, uh, this uh, In Bosnia, we have this highway, which is taking at least 25 years or more to build. It's uh, probably world record. Uh, but I hope they will they will engineer some safe uh, safe road, safe highway. With, uh, for example, the curves in the road, they have to be done in specific way. The tunnels have to be safe. Uh, traffic signs have to be. This is a safe uh, infrastructure for for the vehicles. In the internet, we are uh, internet started as unsafe infrastructure, very unsafe, and it was uh, without any security in in mind when it was designed. And now so we have a lot of protocols which are add, which we add uh, are introduced later. So, for example, HTTP, uh, which is a basic protocol for uh, any web page, uh, was which HTTP is now secured, and almost more than half of the web pages have HTTPS, and this S is uh, for security. Uh, similar is uh, with Borderway Gateway Protocol. Uh, this is another. Very important protocol. Now we have secure border gateway protocol. We have DNS protocol, for example, for, to recognize the, the, the DNS protocol is recognizing the, the 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 web pages is translating them to numbers, and we have secure DNS. A uh, number of these protocols are now uh, secured, but they are not secured by design. They are secured many years after they were invented. So this is a, a, the biggest problem with internet and with cyber uh, space. In the cars, we have airbags and brakes, and these are preventive controls. I was uh, mentioning in mental models protection. Protection uh, comes obviously comes first when you uh, plan in planning phase. Uh, and these protection controls, there we have many of them. I mentioned antivirus, but there are anti malware, there are many enforcement rules. Uh, so there are a number of controls. Before the shit happens, you have to have some of the preventive and protective con uh, controls in place. Uh, distraction and 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 drunk drivers education drunk drivers education this is uh, uh, about uh, awareness about education again this is something that is uh, similar for driving or for uh, navigating on on internet uh, navigating but here is a word which is uh, looks more like navigating in the in the sea no navigating Sensors for collision avoidance. Uh, this is a relatively new add-on in the cars. Uh, my car has some sensors for collision avoidance. So when I too close to to vehicle in front of me, uh, there are some brakes and it says uh, 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 red light, and there is a uh, uh, sensors for to 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 warn me. In cybersecurity, we have threat detection. Uh, we have also response, and this is, these are uh, increasingly automated with artificial intelligence. These are uh, works of uh, also of uh, external teams like Security Operations Center, SOC, or CERT teams, but also internally there are many tools uh, that that do threat detection and response. Seat belts, law enforcement. Uh, I was born. Uh, I already told uh, 69, and my when I was a child there were no no seat belts, and in a car we were driving for hours from Bogoino to Duboka, which is a, a village where we have. Uh, past our vacations, and there were no seat belts. Uh, nobody even thought about it. But when they were introduced, uh, they were supposed to be uh, fine. I don't. I'm not sure if they are uh, doing it. Uh, but there is a law enforcement, so there are fines. If you don't put seat belt, you should get fined by the police. Obviously, there are police. And now, in uh, cybersecurity, there are some policies uh, like network information security, GDPR for data protection, uh, CSA, Cybersecurity Act. There are, there are many others for critical infrastructure protection. If you don't comply with these 
rules uh, with its laws, you should get fined. And in matter of fact, for GDPR, there are already some fines. Uh, this is not so common, so so it's not there is uh, not much news about it. There is uh, the people do not uh, respect it so much, but it will get more and more common. I think that people get fines for not respecting a uh, law. The new law, for example, that is now in preparation. I will come back later to this. is called Cyber Resilience Act, uh, and uh, it is about uh, security uh, of products of products like software, like uh, internet, uh, like things, sensors that I mentioned. So we will have this uh, very soon also. Finally, uh, for driving car, you need to pass exam, you need a license, and you need technical inspection of your vehicle. You cannot just uh, have vehicle which is uh, 55 or 60 years old uh, and then uh, go to, to the road. You have to pass technical inspection. But unfortunately, we are not there yet. You can now take any virus infected uh, machine, laptop, computer, and you can go on internet and it will be a threat to everybody else because it's probably having some bots uh, which are launching attacks from your uh, machine, uh, participating in, uh, in attacks which are known as uh, distributed denial of service. These DDoS attacks are probably the most, the biggest problem today with cybersecurity because they are massive there are so there are uh, many uh, of these pcs or devices mobile phones are infected with these bots which are sending from your mobile phone from your computer are sending uh, messages like uh, pinging or some other messages just to 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 crash the web page of some company or 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 government or cetera okay so let's move uh, acronyms so a little bit more this is not about metaphors these are uh, acronyms to to memorize some of the concept cai uh, everybody knows i think everybody knows what cai is uh, central intelligence agency no is uh, in the movies here in cybersecurity it stands for confidentiality integrity availability so basically cybersecurity is these three things confidentiality integrity availability plus some would always say what about I identification access control authentication and authorization yes these are uh, also uh, part of cyber security depends how do you treat them for example in my company we have different uh, labs for uh, identity and privacy and for cyber security so in cyber in our in environment uh, we just treat confidentiality integrity availability and a separated research lab we treat identity access control authorization and authentication uh, Another one, rest in peace, uh, RIP. This is risk is equals impact multiplied by probability. Uh, basically, there are a lot of uncertainties associated with cyber attacks. These are certainties can be threats, for example, which is published somewhere. You, you know that there is a phishing attack uh, in university, for example, and some people were attacked with phishing emails, but maybe it just threat that it does not apply to you because you never received it. So for you is a uh, uh, probability is high because it's university, but uh, it's still not incident. Uh, then you have incident that can be alarm uh, or not and be incident, which is not uh, uh, attack. For example, there are incidents which are simply uh, faults of uh, software that crashes or whatever. PPT, it stands for people, process, and technology. Security and cybersecurity is not only about technology. This is one big mistake that people make. Uh, cybersecurity is uh, about people, process, and technology. Why do I repeat this? Uh, because the many attacks are actually done through social engineering. Uh, social engineering is somebody calls you and says, uh, this is a password uh, from the, I don't know, reset password. Uh, I want to reset password. And, and this, uh, this, many attacks are done through the social engineering and uh, pretending to be somebody impersonation of the other people. So uh, it is almost impossible to be to comply always with security policy. Uh, it is even for uh, experts, uh, it is very likely that you will sooner or later you will fall into some uh, click on some link. It happened to me 
for example, and, and I'm not the, the big expert, I'm uh, Mickey Mouse of this uh, cybersecurity. They are much bigger experts than me that also uh, were uh, falling into this uh, trap that they receive email and then somebody says, okay, this is my CV, please click, uh, see, this is my research work, please check uh, what I did. And these are people that you meet at conferences, for example, so so you don't remember after conference okay maybe i met this guy and you click on the link and uh, it could be uh, you know some malware or phishing or whatever process i mentioned a couple of these processes like passport policy or, or compliance policy uh, and technology of course there are many related terms many related terms there is a, a book whole book about taxonomy which is done by grc G joint research center which is a J agency depending on european commission but it is just one taxonomy they put it in four dimensions with uh, and and to be honest i think it's quite useless because uh, it is complex and and it is not not uh, easy to understand uh, and it is also, uh, as I said, overlapping, a lot of overlapping terms uh, and in this taxonomy. Uh, I, I here put some of this, but I will really not try to be all inclusive or to bore you to death uh, with this uh, terminology. A uh, couple of these maybe later I will repeat, but it is just important to know that uh, there are, don't be scared because the, their, their discussions also every time we have a conference there are discussions uh, for example difference between trust and trustworthiness it always comes for 25 years uh, risks well risks are well understood so i think risks i i like uh, risk management and risk assurance because this these are terminology which is well understood by everybody even my mother who is 85 understand what are risks Everybody, small children, when they learn how to cross the street, they know what is a risk. You, you, to small children, you say, okay, when there's a green light, you cross. When there's a red light, you don't cross. So we have uh, several types of risks, uh, known, knowns, known, unknowns, unknown knowns, unknowns, unknowns, unknown, unknown, unknown. Uh, you can imagine that, okay, the known knowns is, for example, when you cross on, on, uh, on green light, you know that there is some risk, very but you know that there are things that you uh, you are aware of and you understand. Uh, maybe if you cross uh, on a green light, there are there, you're not aware that there is a car that is going 300 per hour, uh, so you 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 have unknown knowns. There are some risk when you cross on the red light that you are aware of uh, this risk, but uh, or you don't understand. Okay, so they basically there are these are uh, I think not exclusive to cybersecurity, risk management is discipline which is much larger than cybersecurity and it's quite well understood. I already said risks is impact and probability. So probability is uh, we are sometimes humans, we are this, you know, an animal which is sometimes very good with risk in some cases, sometimes very bad. For example, risk. what is the risk of flying uh, to have an airplane crashed? It's much lower than having a car accident, for example, but more people are afraid of flying in an in a airplane than driving by car. Uh, this has to do again with mental models about control. Uh, if you're not in control, you're scared of. Anyway, risks are subjective. So these are not objective. It's very difficult to find artificial intelligence model for risk because they are very subjective. And it is impact multiplied by probability. If you don't know probability, which is possible, at least try to reduce impact. So if you want really uh, advice, the people ask me, okay, what is advice for cybersecurity? Eh, let me know, what should I do? Uh, don't keep anything important on your laptop that is connected on the internet. Uh, I say to people, okay, buy two, two machines. Okay, I know that these days they are secondhand. For example, I have one secondhand that I, I, uh, laptop that I bought for 20, 30 euros or maximum 50 euros you can have something but you put all the shit which is uh, uh malware and i don't know that that you can play with don't don't mix important things with with unimportant things so separate this by uh different machines for example this one one way to reduce impact uh known unknowns of cybersecurity. well this is i guess uh, i already spoke <laughs> quite a lot about risk 
uh, it's linked between objective, subjective, and acceptable. So attitude towards the risk. I spoke about risk for me, risk for others. So it's not only for you. This uh, the risk uh, can be from your machine to others. Uh, it depends on organization culture or also on on each on each uh, country. Or uh, risk is something that is very cultural. Uh, trust relationship cooperation. Reducing attack surface is not enough. This is why the picture here is this 11 goalkeepers. If you put 11 goalkeepers, yes, you will reduce risk, uh, but then you don't have players to play in the field. So uh, when the company is uh, decides about what is acceptable risk, they have to do their business. So they cannot put all the money in information security and then forget about normal business. When they put the firewall, they cannot stop all holes and, and uh, as I said, in the castle digital fortress and then don't let people go come inside their partners or, or uh, teleworkers. So it's always uh, risk is always also about balance, about appetite. You cannot have 11 goalkeepers. You cannot uh, maximize uh, security. You can optimize security because you also have to think about your daily business. Enisa is Enisa is a very nice name in Bosnia, Enisa, and it's also a name of European Union Agency for Cybersecurity, the European Network Information Security Agency. It is based in uh, Greece. It was originally in Heraklion in Crete, and, and it also has in Athens uh, offices. Every year they publish top 15 cyber threats. And every year they are very similar, so they you wouldn't expect uh, maybe big changes. I, I'm not sure which year is this top 15, but you have phishing, you have malware number one, web-based attacks number two, phishing number three. So no big changes. I think this is this year it was for tenth time, so they started in 2012, and uh, uh, they celebrated this year tenth edition of this landscape threat landscape, and uh, they are differences in trend trends for example ransomware was uh, not on list and is uh, growing now or uh, i don't know some of the trends are different but normally there are no big uh, entries in this landscape okay let's move to uh, what is maybe interesting for students i assume that most of you are students uh, so you're interested in profession of cyber security okay this is a way that i structure in my head about profession uh, what do you read so if you read there are cybersecurity professionals that read manuals they con configure firewalls they configure tools and um, they are basically the the you know the system administrator that uh, put access control policy and you can do this by reading manuals there are those who read code uh, developers software developers should know about security because security should be there by design from the start from the requirement phase so even uh, even uh, there are not so many developers that are security experts they should be uh, more security experts to have secure uh, software development life cycle those who read law the auditors for example they are uh, well not necessarily lawyers but they uh, they have to not only and not only law but i i put here those who rules and uh, they are checking uh, if the security policy is in place, everything is so the, they, the for example, people who certif do certification of 27,001. Uh, probably the smartest ones are those who read mathematics, uh, crypto engineers, uh, cryptography is very hard discipline for, for many. Understanding uh, symmetric cryptography or asymmetric cryptography and uh, developing new algorithms. This is uh, uh, one of the uh, for me, the, the, the segments of cybersecurity that I admire the most. Analysts, uh, the people who work in uh, a security operations center, in CERT teams, they have analytic uh, behavior, etc. Uh, ability versus capacity. Uh, so ability is uh, about the, what you have now. A capacity is more about what you can acquire in the future. So this is a difference between ability and capacity. There are uh, some people that have ability for abstraction to abstract people, uh, and they are usually working uh, in more uh, research or consulting projects. And there are people who have capacity to synthesize, uh, to, to make conclusions like uh, analyst uh, or capacity to analyze. So before thinking about uh, 
which segment of cybersecurity professions is best for me, you should think about yourself. I do uh, this exercise with my mentees. I ask them to, to think about their strengths, weaknesses, uh, and then to tell me, okay, what is, is there, for example, creativity, uh, leadership, well, I don't know, there are different uh, strengths and weaknesses. And then if you're more on hands-on experience, then go to one part of uh, one segment cybersecurity. If you're more about conceptual thinking, go to another one. Uh, what do you like? If you like uh, more adventurous jobs or if you like uh, staying uh, less adventure, uh, if you like food versus wouldn't be happy. Okay, so if you basically there are some jobs which are at, uh, this is very subjective. This is there are some jobs which are for me more boring, like operations, because you do repetitive things like the people in help desk that uh, my, my password, uh, please reinitiate my password. And these are repetitive operations jobs that are more or less you're doing every day the same. And there are jobs like R&D or consulting that are very challenging and you'd always do different projects. Uh, career pathway, you can find many of these on internet. So I will be very brief on this because uh, this is not my slide. This is, I took it somewhere from internet. Uh, this is one way to structure different uh, types of uh, technician, consultant, administrator. Uh, there are many others. This is from Atos. In Atos, we have career path. This is uh, one way to structure different career paths. And then for each of these roles in company, we have courses in Atos. So we, this is, I took it from our intranet. Uh, I just go to one of them and I say, okay, for this uh, career path, uh, these are recommended courses. Uh, Microsoft has something similar. They, I took this from Microsoft. Uh, what I like here that they structure this according to the plan, build and run. So uh, there are roles, uh, different roles uh, in leadership, in architecture, in uh, uh, that are linked to planning phase or building phase, like development system integration, and for running phase, like the detecting threats. Uh, certifications, I, I uh, put here technology agnostic certification because there are many technology specific or company specific certifications. I mentioned Microsoft, but there are many, many others. Uh, I cannot recommend any. I don't have any. Uh, when the, I started with this, it was not uh, needed. I did many courses, but uh, I have very few certifications, and uh, none of these listed here. Uh, so I, I don't say they are not good. They are all certification is, of course, is good. It's just that it's not a replacement for university. Uh, so it's and it's also not replacement for experience. So it is it's a complementary and it is uh, it is becoming uh, increasingly important. Many companies are now asking for certification. Uh, many resources are also available. Again, this is you can uh, search on internet. I think I will also let this slide so you can. But the, there are many. I, I put here a couple of blogs which are very personal blogs. Bruce Schneier is uh, my favorite Bruce Schneier is uh, I, I was subscribed to this blog uh, 25 years I think <laughs> or maybe a bit less 23 maybe uh, but there are many other uh, blogs and uh, websites and events and etc etc so there are a lot of resources uh, so I will speed up because of the time about market so this is uh, the segmentation of market again a uh, lot of uh, seg different segments cloud security you can see here size of the market and you can see compound annual growth which means uh, the movement from one year to another uh, cloud security for example is growing very much quite a lot uh, and others are also growing uh, the, on the market, you have startups, you have SMEs, large uh, but local companies and large multinational companies. Sometimes uh, my mentees ask me, okay, but what should I do? Should I stay working uh, SME or startup? Should I go to large? Uh, it depends. It's, it's, it's very different. There are more opportunities, of course, in a large multinational. There are more different types. I mentioned, for example, uh, consultants or risk assessment or the different uh, different type of roles and, and uh, it's different so it's it's the best is uh, difficult to compare because there are advantages of each one of them and what is what I can say is now that cybersecurity is becoming hype and everybody uh, any type of organization wants to be cybersecurity organization so you have many companies which are not traditionally from cybersecurity for example, consulting firms that are moving to cybersecurity. You have many uh, operational technology providers moving to cybersecurity. So it's becoming very crowded space. 
a lot of companies, telcos, everybody is claiming to do cybersecurity and uh, and probably they do. It's just that the, there are some of them have more maturity and more experience than the others. Uh, this is in Germany, uh, the cybersecurity service provider landscape, a lot of companies, as I said, and you see also a lot of overlap. So the companies like Atos, my company is doing uh, outsourcing or managed services, is doing consulting, is doing everything here, except for telco. Uh, we are doing software, industrial security, everything. Uh, very quickly, uh, this is our portfolio. I will not do promotion of my company. Don't buy anything, please. Uh, just to, to, for illustrative purposes, I wanted to show how do we structure our portfolio. So we have three ecosystems, IT security ecosystems, citizens ID ecosystems, and IoT and industry security ecosystems. And in these ecosystems, we have different products, services, uh, and um, uh, yeah, so basically product services and uh, managed uh, operations. Another example of portfolio, this is Microsoft. Uh, again, they have Defender for everything. So maybe you have on your laptop or computer uh, uh, Microsoft Defender, but there are many other type of defenders for IoT, for example. IoT is Internet of Things, basically it's sensors or could be any, any small device uh, in uh, machines or industrial uh, environment. They have Defender for cloud. They have Defender for uh, different type of endpoints, mobile phone. Sentinel, which is, I mentioned, security, uh, event and information management. This is one type of product, Sentinel, etc. cetera. Uh, EU policy, European uh, policy about cybersecurity. This is a short, uh, very brief overview uh, from 2013 to 2023, the last 10 years, uh, including the next year. So I'm forward looking. <laughs> The last one I mentioned, Cyber Resilience Act, which is about introducing requirements for cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity requirements for products like software or, or uh, things, uh, sensors. There are other uh, acts, uh, strategies. Uh, GDPR is a general data protection regulation, which is about uh, privacy and data protection. What is also uh, increasingly coming is certification of products and services and processes. And here we have a European Union certification, uh, um, cybersecurity certification, which is uh, pending on approval, which is uh, become will in the future will become uh, requested by law. So we are coming to this stage uh, similar to the cars. I mentioned this metaphor with the cars where the car uh, cannot go without uh, uh, on the market if there is not tested and you have this car crashing test and you have five star car, which is a uh, Volvo probably, and you have maybe some Indian or Chinese car, which is have th three stars because when you crash against wall, it's smashed. So we will likely have something like this. We have three levels of assurance. We will have three levels of assurance, high, medium, and low, uh, or basic, advanced, whatever the names they want to give. These three levels will have, we will have uh, high uh, assurance for the critical infrastructure software for example software that is in the airplane you don't want the the windows to crash if you are in the airplane if the if the pilot is pressing uh, on the screen of the of the pilot of your airplane the screen comes okay do you want to install this uh, software yes or no no do you don't want this you want high assurance software on the airplane and and uh, similar systems which are um, um, critically critical for uh, for our lives for economy etc <clears throat> then you have uh, the medium level and uh, obviously we have low level also for those daily use software that is if it crashes you know you can lost you may be your dissertation but uh, it's not big crash for economy um i'm joking so the last part is about future i mentioned already a couple of uh, things about future like certification which is coming uh, from awareness to attention, we have a lot of uh, money now spent to awareness, to training, cybersecurity. This is good because uh, now the most of people are aware of uh, cybersecurity threats about uh, uh, training, etc., phishing, this stuff, viruses. But it's also important to, to move to attention, to have uh, not only aware, but also to have uh, to be attent always on, on the threats. Historic data, we have uh, used this for risk uh, management. I mentioned this. 
but we don't have data for black swans. Black swans are type of events which are high impact, low frequency. You remember this that I said rest, rest in peace, R I P. Uh, risk is impact multiplied by probability, but we have events which are high impact but very low probability. Think about uh, the 9/11, the, the the crash or the airplane crash against uh, Wall Street. Uh, this was very high impact, very low probability. Nobody was expecting it. So this might happen in in uh, cybersecurity as well. And we don't have data for this. Uh, we don't have imagination, or we have imagination, but it's not uh, contemplated in 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 risk management. Uh, trust and trustworthiness. Trust is a relationship. So basically, A trust B in the context of C. I trust Amazon in the context of e-commerce that they will not lose my credit card uh, number, and I give them my credit card number. But always in the context of e-commerce because I don't trust Amazon in the context of you know playing football or I don't know. Uh, and trustworthiness is a property. So. Software is trustworthy because there is a certification in the lab, or there is this and this. So it is a property of of, uh, of uh, software or or object like uh, things, sensors, etc. Ability to monitor, measure, test, and predict. So uh, a little bit about prediction. Uh, there is a, it's very important that we move towards this predictive security and proactive security because we have now reactive security that shit happens and we are uh, the, there is an incident management the um, there is a the alarms everywhere and system administrator get a call from in the middle of the night and uh, ah, come on you have to reboot the server and uh, something happened and we have to be uh, to move towards this predictive approach where uh, by use of again mental models by use of the, the this sharing information if this happened there and there there is correlation rule that it might happen it will happen uh, also there so to move towards predictive and proactive cybersecurity conclusion i hope i'm on time because i think it's seven o'clock almost uh, thank you really for for having me five minutes more i'm finishing this uh, knowledge or experience both uh, so it is important to have knowledge now uh, you're at, most of you are uh, students i guess uh, and your head is stuffed with different bits and pieces of knowledge it looks like uh, uh, pieces of puzzle which are not coming together yet and at least i felt like this when i was a student many there are many things uh, like in mathematics and physics why do i do this why do i and and I did not understand that some of pieces of this puzzle is just to make uh, me think in specific way, in abstract way, conceptual ways. And and then I, then I had experience. I realized that some of these uh, things, which are knowledge loosely coupled pieces of knowledge, they might come together when you have some experience. Uh, capacity building. Uh, I spoke a lot about training, about, but also education. Every plant has its, its own requirements. Every person, every student is different. Uh, in order to grow, you need some plants need more light, uh, some need uh, more water, etc. So this is also uh, for people. Conclusions, uh, the good, the bad and the ugly. This is a very good movie, uh, old movie. The good thing is it's getting strategic. So everybody is getting um, aware of importance of cybersecurity, even directors. Uh, I mean, even directors now, <laughs> directors are uh, very good uh, creatures and animals on this uh, planet, and they are necessary for evolution. Uh, the, the, the many uh, people who were not aware of importance of cybersecurity are now aware, and uh, this is a good news. The bad news is that uh, the cyberspace is getting complex. Now we have autonomous car, for example just to give an example autonomous car has a lot of sensors there are hundreds and hundreds of sensors that get connected to internet that collect your personal data that that are uh, uh, increasingly used for attacks they are at, at attack vectors and you don't want really to your car to be with virus that can or or for example health monitoring there are many machines in hospital that are connected on internet um, so impact is bigger uh, the complexity is enemy of security. This is one of the number one rules. The complexity is enemy of security. So uh, if you have 
like in this uh, Dilbert, I hope you know Dilbert, is, its director says, uh, starting today, all passwords must contain letters, numbers, doodles, sign language, and squirrel noises. This is ugly. This is uh, the ugly news that is, uh, yeah, sometimes we have uh, so complex security policy, so complex also the systems that is uh, almost inevitable to have um, more and more attacks. Extra conclusions. This is really, really last slide. Please. Uh, yesterday, my, my wife is Argentinian, my second wife, my first wife was Spanish. Yesterday, Argentina was winning the World Cup. So uh, this man is uh, uh, nothing to do, has nothing to do with cybersecurity, but he's listening, observing, feeling, and is curious, I think, is best player of all times. And here I will end up my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Alisha, for this amazing presentation. Uh, now we will start a Q&A session. Uh, we already have a couple of questions, so we can start uh, by that, if that's okay with you. That's okay with me. Shall I stop sharing? Uh, that's uh, completely up to you. You can stop sharing. Okay. 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 So the first question is uh, is uh, from your mentee. And uh, I know you already had a brief uh, talk about courses, but the question is, uh, what courses would you recommend for online cyber that uh, about cybersecurity that are online? And uh, I think the main point is that are they are free or at least cheaper ones. Yes. Uh, so there are a couple of these that are free. Uh, uh, edX I mentioned, Coursera. There are the the Sans. Some Sans is very good. Uh, Enisa, look at the web page of Enisa. Enisa is European Network Information Security Agency, and Sans. Uh, I think the Coursera and uh, is not free, and uh, but again, I'm not. I'm not really sure which are free, which are not free. Uh, I usually uh, prefer uh, courses from European university. I don't know. I'm European minded. I don't. Uh, I don't think that American courses are bad either it's there are many good courses and there are many also things on youtube so i i sometimes search for a topic when there is a new topic that i don't know for example recently i had a project of in 5g with uh, many terminology from 5g uh, cyber security and i looked uh, on youtube there is there was a lot of material on youtube but uh, again uh, really look at in google just type uh, a specific uh, for for a beginner well for beginner probably uh, nisa i would say they has quite a lot of resources but also in uh, there there must be also in bosnia in on in, uh, in some on on some web pages also in uh, in bosnian language or i'm not sure thank you arusha uh, so our ne next question is, uh, can you explain the IT audit role again? And what are the responsibilities of that person? Mm -hmm. Okay, so auditor is, uh, there is a, you, you probably saw there is a specific certification for auditors, CISA and uh, auditors are important persons. Uh, usually they are external to company. So we have auditors, for example, when we want, we want certification, uh, let's say in 27001, there are auditors that are checking that everything is in place. So we have security policy, which is uh, implemented, which is enforced. So uh, when there is, a, as I said, in one organization, you can start with uh, designing a security policy with number of rules, password policy rules, uh, anti-malware, uh, antivirus, blah, blah, blah. The controls and, and ISO 27001 is a standard that is listing all these controls in 14 areas. So these are 14 areas that you have to, in each of these 14 areas, you have to, to, to have number of like checkpoints. You have like uh, auditors keep maybe the, the, the Excel file or they have some program and they are checking. Okay, it is done and it is enforced. So uh, so this is each of these, they are, they are like uh, looking for, they have also specific and how should i say uh, they are 
they are coming from accountant world actually the the, the origin of uh, auditors is in the accounting world and they have this accounting uh, mindset where you look details so the good auditors are those who are like accountants good accountants they are looking if the numbers are uh, good and if they are you know there is no mistake so they are looking for errors in the in the in uh, in, in high stack they are looking for small uh, needle so this is a, a mindset of an auditor that is really uh, somebody who is looking into details and when checking uh, that all controls are in place and forced properly etc thank you and as i said many many of the uh, auditors are not technical people they are coming from the accountancy okay thank you for your answer our next question is what do you think about Bosnia and Herzegovina becoming compliant to GDPR rules and uh, will it happen any sooner and would it uh, benefit us? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so GDPR is a regulation that is uh, replacing, so it's from 2016, I think, I'm, I, I forgot, uh, replacing the previous directive. It was existing before that. On the level of European Union, you have two main uh, policy instruments or regulatory instruments, uh, which are directives and regulations. Directives, uh, uh, I'm not sure what was the name of directive for, uh, was translated in national legislation. So the problem with directives before GDPR was that uh, this uh, privacy and data protection directive was implemented in each member states differently. Uh, there was, there is a space for interpretation. So in the national legislation. So with regulation, this problem uh, disappeared. So everywhere in all member states, in 27 member states, uh, there is a, the same regulation applied. So it is like a law which is uh, not transposed to national legislation, but which is like this, must be respected in all countries. There is no more room for interpretation. Uh, as I said, it applies to member states. So it's not for Bosnia, but it, there should be some a uh, piece of legislation, national legislation that is similar to GDPR, interpretation of GDPR into Bosnia national legislation. If Bosnia enters the European Union, it will have to comply with GDPR regulation. Okay, so, so if there is no such law in Bosnia yet, the benefit would be, I think, uh, first of all, protection of consumers. Uh, this is the, the most, the biggest, at least on paper, uh advantage because the, the, the it will minimize there are several principles like minimization of data collection there is the explicit consent uh, all of these uh, rules from the regulation are to protect consumer so when you uh, ask for some digital service from google from any big company but also small company that they don't ask you okay what is the name of your mother and grandmother and grand grandmother and, and grand grand grandmother why? I mean, uh, they, they should minimize data collection and uh, this uh, there should be explicit consent. As I said, there are many rules. They should delete uh, after some period data retention policy. There are, there are these rules that they have respect. So, yes, this will be very beneficial, I think. I hope it is, uh, if it's not already there in the Bosnia national legislation, it should be as soon as possible. Thank you, Alisha. So our next question is, how do you see machine learning being used in cybersecurity in the future? Oh, this is a, a very good question. Um, it is already used uh, now. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, one example in, uh, in uh, threat uh, intelligence because you have correlation. There are many uh, algorithms that are trying to help to automate jobs some jobs are very difficult so you you have to the people who are working in security operations center or set they have to look correlate things so you have on a log file for example uh, something happened uh, the access is denied you get this and and then maybe three hours later you get some other from network you get uh, some packet that is uh, having very suspicious because it's from ip address which is not recognized and it is very the, the, the machine it is job for machine so it's it's really humans are difficult there are there are softwares already they, they have been softwares that do correlation rules but machines are better in learning these patterns 
And uh, I think there is a lot of space here for machine learning, for the artificial intelligence. The problem is that the bad guys, the adversaries, are also using artificial intelligence uh, to, to automate attacks, for example, to, uh, to learn more about you. Uh, let me give you an example of social engineering. Uh, social engineering, you have now very personalized attacks because the, this uh, adversary, there is a software with artificial intelligence adversaries that helps adversaries to know your taste and what you like and what is likely, which link you will be likely to, to click before they do phishing. So uh, it is uh, the sword with two, how do they say this? Sword with two, whatever ostrica is, uh, I don't know, is uh, tops, two sword with two ends. <laughs> Thank you, Adusha. So our next question is, uh, what to do when uh, caught in a phishing attack? Is there some defense after we have clicked on the link? Can you can you just repeat it the first part? I did not see. Uh, what what to do when caught in a phishing attack? Is there some defense after we have clicked on a link? We are you already talked about it uh, when somebody yes says a link and is there some yes. way to prevent it? Yes, of course there is there is there is a, a defense because the when you click on the link uh, the the it can be downloaded, malware can be downloaded, but if you have some uh, software, anti-malware software, it will recognize that this is a, a, a malware and it will stop it. If it's a virus, it, it will recognize that this, uh, there, are, there are protective, I mentioned protective measures. So it is only if, if it's completely new, uh, well, even if it's completely new uh, piece of malware or completely new virus, it's, there is still chance to be detected because you might have anomaly detection. Anomaly detection is a piece of uh, software, so, uh, so it's a control, security, cybersecurity control, which detects anomalous behavior. And this is, for example, we have one that uh, is detecting uh, abnormal patterns on network. So something happens which is not usual behavior, but then you say, okay, what is usual? Because I, every day I do, I, I surf on different uh, webs, I do different type of network traffic, what is usual for me, what is normal for me. But still there are sometimes things that that can be identified as abnormal behavior or anomalous behavior. So there are this type of software that is, uh, the clicking on link is not meaning that you will be infected. So you might still have some uh, on your computer. You should have at least antivirus. That's basic hygiene. That's like washing hands. That's that's the basic uh, anti-malware or antivirus. But more advanced companies, like in my company, we have this anomaly detection. We have many others, like uh, uh, the rules, correlation, security, event and management, uh, many others, uh, protective measures. Thank you for the answer, Alyosha. Our next uh, attendee says, thank you for the great uh, introduction to cybersecurity. I have a question regarding implementing the security as a career path as a fresh student majoring in computer sciences. To go through general IT infrastructure as a system engineer or a network engineer, databases or some other ways. What is your recommendation? Pre again, please repeat, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so. <laughs> The question is, as a student of uh, computer sciences, uh, what is uh, the career path that they should take? Is it a general IT infrastructure as a system engineer or a network mm -hmm. engineer, databases or some other way? Is there some recommendation? Uh, yeah, there is no specific, uh, there are some masters in cybersecurity. There, are, there is no specific cybersecurity uh, career in, in uh, universities. There are some specialization so usually uh, it is uh, in uh, informatics or uh, in, there are, as i said it is there are a couple of subjects that are useful cryptography for example uh, cryptography is about mathematics it is a subject on uh, uh, mathematical faculty i had it uh, when i was student in eindhoven and i had it but i had it because i was uh, mix uh, i was studying in mix between I was studying information technology. It was a mix between technical engineering and uh, mathematical. Uh, 
uh, faculty. So I had a number of signatures from the electrical, uh, electrotechnical engineering and some uh, subjects from mathematical, like cryptography, for example. Uh, so there is, there are some subjects which are uh, good, but again, cryptography, I never used it. I, I had it and it's useful, but it's not uh, really uh, necessary for many roles in cybersecurity. I think uh, it's it's good to have uh, general in any from general any specialization depends on uh, what what specialization you take for ethical hacker you probably need to take practical experience because this is not something that is uh, they teach at university why because for ethical hacking uh, it changes so dynamically that vulnerability testing and pen testing this is uh, the, the the technologies techniques are changing every year so uh, universities cannot keep with this uh, but if you have for example software engineering then you will understand software uh, development life cycle you will know uh, that um, testing is important at requirement stage testing is important at architecture stage at design stage and then it comes at the end pen testing in the final operational stage so uh, i would say in general uh, is better but then when you move towards the end also uh, maybe to take more specific uh, topics thank you Alisha. our next question is uh, given that the companies did not take cybersecurity seriously in the past uh, which had an outcome of huge financial losses has that changed today or is there still a room for improvement there is there is a still room for, definitely for improvement especially for uh, smes for small and medium enterprises there are many uh, smes uh, small and medium enterprises uh, that or micro enterprises that they have their data i don't know on on, on facebook page they, they they don't have web page they put it everything on facebook page and sometimes it's just sensitive data they have uh, they capture their passwords and they lose this data uh so the, the, the i think there is a lot of space also uh, for improvement in these sectors which are not traditionally uh don't digitalized like uh healthcare there are hospitals we have big problems with hospital they are very reluctant to to accept digitalization and with digitalization it comes risk and cybersecurity. So, in some sectors, uh, in uh, financial sectors, uh, you know, there's also normal because this is where the most attacks happen. This is where the money is. So, the, the, they are the most sophisticated. Um, but it, it happens, you know, in government. I know that in Bosnian government, there were a couple of attacks in the past. Now they take it seriously and now it's improved uh, in, uh, in many companies. But uh, especially in SMEs and especially in some sectors, like healthcare, like industry, which are not so digitalized, but are now getting more and more uh, connected to the internet. Thank you, Alyosha. Our next question is, what do you think about decentralization being the future of the internet? Because I feel that peers uh, keeping other peers in check seems to be the best way to protect from a man in the middle attack and tampering. Hmm. This is uh, ex from an expert. <laughs> okay, so decentralization is now popular with blockchain. And uh, blockchain is technology that goes beyond cryptocurrencies, beyond uh, Bitcoin. It is, uh, it is as, a, as a technology, I respect it. And I think it's a, it's a very distributed ledgers in general, not only blockchain, but there are other distributed ledger technologies. Uh, and also in network architecture, decentralization is not something new. It was uh, used for many redundancy, for example, was used always as a one type of control. When you have redundant, redundant servers uh, and distributed, so decentralization uh, is also. Uh, let's let's give example of public infrastructure with the certification authority, which is centralized. You have trusted third party which is centralized you have to trust this central point and it is definitely a weakness because an attack on on certification authority is uh, bringing in danger all the all the certificates uh, but is it a future is it completely future to decentralize it is it is getting in this direction many things are getting in this direction even social networks now they are protocols for 
and new social networks like Mastodon, like uh, which are getting decentralized. Uh, uh, social networks are yet another example of, of centralization, which, which is dangerous for security. So, yeah, I would generally I would agree, but I would not give uh, centralization because sometimes it's not it's not uh, sometimes it's inevitable. Uh, uh, to give you an example, the, the distributed autonomous organizations, which are a type of governance for a blockchain, there are many experiments, but they still don't work. Uh, the centralization in some aspects uh, here, there, there is some some part of must be centralized. So, uh, yes, I would agree the centralization, but still uh, it will not be immediately. There, there are a lot of things that needs to be centralized yet. Thank you, Arusha. We have uh, two more questions. First one is. I hope uh, I gave uh, I gave answer to this question. Maybe, maybe I can I, I think talk more. Did, I think you did perfectly. Uh, so our next question would be, uh, what antivirus app do you recommend? And is uh, hello. Because our next question is, uh, what antivirus app do you recommend? I lost sound. No. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Oh, I can. I, I. Hello. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I can hear you. I for the moment okay, I think so... I lost. I lost sound. Uh, did sorry. I gave answer to this question, or did you hear? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, you did. Okay. You did perfectly. Uh, so our next question is: What antivirus app do you recommend? And uh, is uh, Kaspersky the best option, or are there some uh, free apps out there? Oof, uh, I'm I'm not an expert in uh, antivirus apps and benchmarking of antivirus apps, so I I, I uh, have to be very careful. Uh, I use Defender from Microsoft, but it, because my company is uh, giving this as uh, for free, Kaspersky is a very good company is a well-known company so uh, but again uh to to do proper benchmarking uh i i don't know i i i'm not an expert it's difficult i can say that for free uh sometimes uh, there are some um uh, have to be careful also some some i've heard about some free antivirus apps that are actually uh introducing virus themselves so and and they are coming sometimes at the cost of collecting your private information so i've heard about this threat of of uh, freeware uh in general and uh, free uh virus apps but i i don't have really data about benchmarking of this okay thank you alisha and our last question for this webinar is uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. How can this type of security be ensured in robots and the embedded systems? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, this is a, another uh, research topic which is very, uh, very big. So uh, I mentioned sensors and Internet of Things, and security in Internet of Things is is a very important, very big topic, and it's growing. And this is uh, uh, one of the issues that has been trivialized in the past and we all have now a uh, smart tv that comes with the default password and it's not changed we have uh, many other things which are connected to internet and we don't even know they are connected to internet or they can be connected to internet so these are the what we uh, what is the the big threat and um, the obsolete middleware obsolete uh, firmware uh, there is definitely need here for um, uh, for research and for updating this. And an even bigger problem is a supply chain, because there are many things which are built on top of these sensors. So supply chain, starting with processors or with chips, where you have also uh, uh, attacks on chips uh, on, on the on the level of hardware. And then on hardware, you have uh, firmware. Uh, the, the, this firmware has to be updated and it has to be updated. Think about car, for example. Car is very complex uh, thing that uh, I already said, there are more than 400 sensors in modern cars. There are many things that connect on internet. It's, it's connected car and autonomous vehicle. This is definitely uh, a, a future. So uh, when you 
take your car, it has to be uh, maybe to update the, or to, to do patching of some uh, middleware or firmware on your chips and sensors which are in the car. And, and uh, how do you trust these updates? And, and th this is a whole supply chain, one thing that builds on top of the other. And um, it is it is a big problem, the supply chain security. And this is also, I did not mention it, that why Europe is very worried because most of these components are not from Europe. So there is something that the uh, EU calls uh, digital sovereignty and politicians are full of this. All uh, politicians are talking about digital sovereignty, but nobody knows how difficult it is. Uh, impossible, I would say, because uh, today we have I don't know percentage, but uh, I would say with big majority of uh, hardware made in uh, outside of Europe and also with software, we have a lot of uh, software that we must trust. We have to trust and it's not European. So this is a, a little bit illusion to have this uh, supply chain completely secured or completely European made. Yes, it's a, it's a very difficult and tough issue. Yes. Thank you, Arusha. Uh, that would be all for the questions. At this point, I would like to say thank you for joining us on this evening. I, we hope that everyone and yourself enjoyed the lecture and the questions that we had. And I hope to seeing you in Barcelona and in a, our future events. And in Sarajevo, in Mostar, in whatever, wherever you call me, wherever uh, there is opportunity, I will be there.